right, welcome everyone to another episode of Chef Life Live. This one is coming to you live from Bridgman, Michigan, back in my hometown for this episode. That's why the background's a little bit different. And I do apologize if the stream gets a little fuzzy at times. Uh, it's snowing really hard out and the internet's kind of uh, not doing too great for me. And my guest lives all the way in the mountains, and so I don't think his internet is super awesome right now either. So bear with us tonight. Let us know in the comments if you missed anything, if you want to know anything. But yeah, so this is going to be a great episode. Welcome to Chef Life Live. Like I said, I'm your host, so Touche, and Chef Life Live is where I talk to the diverse group of individuals who make up the food service industry, give them all a platform, tell their story, because like I said before, everyone's got one. So many great stories in the food service industry. Uh, my guest tonight is Tim. He was my chef de cuisine when I worked at TPC Sawgrass. I learned a lot from him. He gave me probably the most memorable goodbye speech I've ever heard. I can tell it a little later. I don't know if he remembers it or not, but a little about Tim. Tim grew up in Watertown, Massachusetts, where he began his career in the food service industry. Tim began cooking when he was just 15 years old. He worked for a catering company out of Waltman, Massachusetts for seven years. In 2005, he had the opportunity to move to Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida and work at the PGA Tours headquarters at TPC Sawgrass. While Tim was at TPC, he attended culinary school and completed uh, the Cordon Blues program at the Orlando Culinary Academy. Tim eventually worked his way up to becoming the chef de cuisine and then left TPC in 2017. From there, he moved on and accepted a position as the director of culinary arts at Rumbling Bald Resort in Lake Lure, North Carolina. In 2020, Tim left the chef life after 22 years of being in the kitchen. Now you can find Tim helping his girlfriend run long-term family care homes. So that's just a little bit about Tim, and we'll bring him on, and we'll get to know Tim just a little bit better. Hey, Tim. Hey, what's up? <laughs> and the service is already bad. How you doing? Doing well. Good, good. Did I miss anything about uh, your intro? Anything you wanted to add that I didn't cover? No, no. It was, um, you said Walham. I don't even know what you said, but it was Waltham, yeah. Massachusetts. Waltham. Uh, anybody sorry. watching from the area? You, you guys, yours, your cities over there have weird names. Your East Coast Bostonians they're neighborhoods old. or whatever. They're old. Yes, yes, they are. <laughs> so. Uh, so you grew up in Massachusetts out on the East Coast. Uh, what, what was the food scene like growing up out there? A lot of clam chowder, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, tons. I mean, it, it was uh, very diverse from, uh, from Florida, um, even, even up here in the mountains. It just uh, anything from Armenian to uh, you know, clam chowder, Boston lobsters, and um, Chinese, Italian. Um, Irish, there's just so many different neighborhoods up there that you could go get so many different yeah. different meals. It was, I mean, that's probably what I missed most about Boston. Yeah. I mean, just that, all the different cuisines that you could eat, just a bus ride away or train ride or just short distance oh, wow. or everything. Yeah, I don't know too much about the Boston like food scene. My fiance's family is from there, and I haven't been able to spend like enough time on my visits just from working, only being able to go for like a week and have to come back. And so, haven't been able to explore too much of the food scene there. But I mean, I've heard I've heard good. Boston's good like things. that uh, that big little city kind of thing. You know, you can see okay all of Boston in a weekend kind of thing. You know, it's not it's not like Chicago or New York. It's it, it's big, but it's right. it's small. Yeah. That makes sense. What are what are some of your other favorite like food cities that you like to go to? I'd say since since I've been down the south, Charleston's been a big one. Um, it, it has a little bit of everything, just like just like Boston. You know, it's not just singled out to southern food. Where I mean, there is that southern cuisine there, and if you're going to go somewhere, that's probably the spot. But um, yeah, there's chefs from all over that try to bring so many different kind of cuisines together. Um, I've just never had a bad meal there. Any, any, just little from a mom and pop shop to, to your, you know, your named restaurants, just everything. I mean, it's just always been great. Yeah. That's cool. What about like internationally? Any favorite international cities for food you enjoy? Um, I, I love Aruba. 
I go back to Aruba, Aruba. a lot. I've never, I've never had a bad meal in Aruba. Like, um, people are nice. The food's always great. Um, I mean, one of the best ceviches I've ever had was uh, I was uh, we were doing um, the UTV ride, and the guy pulled us over. We were pulling mud, and there was a beach with some little shack right there. And he's like, "You want to clean up in the ocean?" Because we were just covered in mud, and we're like, "Yeah." And I'm like. Well, let's get a drink or something. They pull out a menu that food there, and I'm like, well, I'll get a ceviche while I'm here. And I mean, it was amazing. It was awesome. Yeah, I would imagine. So Aruba is probably yeah. one of my favorite. That's a new one. I haven't heard Aruba. It's, for... it's just that people travel there from all over, so you can get anything really, yeah. you know. And it's and for some, like I said, I've never had a bad meal there. Yeah, Julie wants to know um, what's, what's typical of. Aruba's I don't cuisine. Really, I would I would assume seafood. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't I don't can't even say that I had an Arubian meal. It's just always I think it's just a little bit of everything brought in from everywhere. You know, your chefs uh, I can't even say I've probably ate from a local chef or whatnot. I mean, everybody's from brought in from somewhere. Um yeah. I mean, I guess I would sense. say I mean ceviche probably was so, I mean, some kind of seafood, yeah, seafood is probably yeah. a good thing. I mean, it's always been, I can't say I've gone there, but like, oh, this is a Rubian. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I, I've never I heard mean, of. Yeah. You plan on going back, so I'm going to have to look into that next time I'm there. Yeah. Definitely will. I would imagine it has a lot to do with seafood. If I, yeah, I feel I mean, like most of those island, island countries, they're just, you know, seafood. Cause it's all it's there. I mean, that's for the most part. That's what we are eating when we are there. My my girlfriend doesn't really like seafood that much, so I'm like, anytime I can get her to try something, um, on vacation when she's a little that's the spot. I'm always about her to try the cargo in Aruba, and she yeah, uh, she didn't she she liked it, and that's really I mean I guess it's not seafood, but yeah, uh, I I get I get that the. Girlfriend not liking seafood. That's how my my fiance is. She's a, from the East Coast. Yeah, she's a, from the East Coast and doesn't like warrior. seafood. She's a fried chicken and Mountain Dew, and she's happy. I mean, who wouldn't be happy with that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> with the the pandemic and everything, did you have any like guilty pleasure foods while you were kind of like trapped away? Um, like, DoorDash was huge for uh, for us. I mean. I'd say, um, I mean, I would get Five Guys any chance I had. I mean, a Five Guys burger. Five um, Guys, that's unreal. That's a good one. Amazing. Um, I mean, we, we did a lot of, I don't know if it was a guilty pleasure of grocery shopping on DoorDash. Um, so I guess for me, um, it kind of was a guilty pleasure being a chef and not going into the store and, you know, picking out my own vegetables or ingredients or whatnot. Yeah. Um, just having somebody else right. for me, I, I always kind of felt a little, uh, you know, what am I doing wrong? There's something wrong with this. But then again, it's, you know, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. The less I right. have to go to the store, the better, I guess. But yeah, that didn't make sense. That's what we're supposed to do. It's got to stay away. But That's what they tell us. Uh, what, about, you know? what about, what about, what about, yeah, exactly. What about uh, any guilty pleasure like New England specialties? What what was your go-to for New England? Uh, back home, I mean, like I said, I mean, there's so many different things. And the first thing I kind of jump to when I get back home is um, a slice of pizza. As crazy as that sounds, um, okay. Italian cold <laughs> cuts, the North End. If they're cold cuts, I mean, mortadella. I love mortadella. And as the craziest sounds, I can't find it anywhere up in the mountains. Like, they just, people just don't know where it is. I'll ask at a, at a deli, and they're like, huh? You know, looking at me like I got 10 heads. And I'm like, it's really just below yeah. me, but okay. You know, that's all. All you have to say is no, we don't <laughs> right. have it. Um, um, yeah. Love, I mean, I grew up in a predominantly Armenian neighborhood. So, I mean, every time I go home, Lemurgen is, I mean, is one of my favorites. Um, I mean, that's. And we didn't really get to eat much as a kid. My parents were there from um, Italy, so my mom Tim, cooked. I mean, you're you breaking know, up real bad. Hardly. You said what? You're breaking up real bad. I don't know if everyone else can hear you well, but I'm having a hard time. 
Oh, um, well, I was saying my, my parents were immigrants from Italy, so we never, never got to go out to eat, really. We just, my mom cooked seven oh, okay. days a week, three, four meals a day. Um, so, I mean, yeah. most of my, most of my uh, indulging in anything was when I was old enough to kind of drive myself and take myself out to eat and stuff like that. So I kind of yeah. stared to the, to the things I couldn't get at home, like Parmesan or, you know, a slice of pizza or, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. For sure. That makes sense. I get that. With, do you have a, a mo like a absolute, like number one, most memorable meal anywhere? I know it's kind of, that's kind of a tough one. It's I think for a lot tough. of people. I mean, but. Recently, what sticks in my head is Aruba. We went to, um, I think it was called JR Steakhouse, and it was in the Renaissance Hotel downtown. Um, okay. And it was just simple, a simple steakhouse. We got um, some uh, Japanese Wagyu, some tartare. Uh, the atmosphere was amazing. The server was great. Um, all the food was on point. I mean, uh, I'm that kind of person when I go out to eat, I um, and everybody makes fun of me that whoever I'm with or whatnot, I'll get two entrees, I'll get – three appetizers and they're like, how are you going to eat all that? I'm like, I'm probably not, but I'm going to try all of it. That's for sure. So yeah. uh, that was one of my classic, uh, I'm ordering a little bit of everything on this menu. Uh, and we did and everything that I tried was, it was good. Everything was on point. I mean, uh, even to the drinks, yeah. the bartenders came right to the table and made the drinks there. Uh, a lot of the food they nice. made table side. Um, it was great. That's was cool. Yeah, so sounds great. I'm the same like, way. Uh, pandemic was just like it's been so long, but it's only been a year. It's like hard to think of anything else now. Right? Yeah. It's like even when you know you watch TV shows or whatever. I'm like, man, there all these people are so close together. Like, no one's wearing a mask. What's going on? Yeah, I know. It's, it's like, like weird. Well, that's what life <laughs> used to be like. Right? Yeah. I know I've been seeing all these like funny pictures online and it's like a black and white photo of just like people eating in a restaurant. And it was like, this is a vintage photo from 2019 when <laughs> yeah. of people eating in a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. Um, yeah. I'm the same way though. When it comes to like going out to a new place and ordering, it's like either I'm definitely doing the tasting menu if it's that type of place or I'm just ordering like mm -hmm. almost one of everything from each section just so I can get a good, you know, array yeah. of the menu and what the chef's doing. Looking at me like, all that. And usually I never get steak. Yeah. yeah. All that day and it was, um, yeah, it was a point. Oh, froze up on me. Got me? Still there? You good? Yeah. No, yeah, you, fro yeah. you froze up on me there. <laughs> uh, I usually never order a steak. Um, and it just happened to be a steakhouse, and there's some Japanese wagyu, like American wagyu, Australian wagyu. I don't think I've ever tried a Japanese wagyu, but once at TPC, and I was like, let me get this mm -hmm. again, and it was lived up to it. I hope so. But that's really cool, though, <laughs> that, they, that they offered so many different types of wagyu. I've never really seen that. Usually it's just the one. The place must have been rolling yeah, to be able to afford it. I was kind of shocked by it. Too. Yeah, that's not a that's not a cheap cut. You're a cheap way to get your beef, but all right. Yeah. Now that we've gotten to know you just a little bit better, it's everyone's it's time for everyone's favorite segment, which of course requires no garnish. All right. So I've been asking all my guests this because I do find it pretty interesting. But how do you feel? Have you done interviews before? And like, how do you actually feel about being interviewed and just talking about yourself? Um, it doesn't bother me really. I don't think it's too. Um, my, the kids asked me earlier, "Is that going to be weird talking about yourself and whatnot?" And I'm like, I, I'm just, I'm just so used to it. I kind of, I feel like I'm on an interview when I was interviewing in the business. You know, I'm kind of telling my employees or my new hires or, you know, about myself more than anything. I mean, do you, you mesh with me kind of thing before I even want to hire you and bring you on? This is who I am. This is uh, who you have to deal with kind of thing. And you don't come work for me. So it's like, ah, I feel like I've been interviewed a bunch of times. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So with cooking, the, was this something that you saw yourself doing as a career at a younger age or is just something you kind of fell into? Um, I mean, I started so early, I guess, but just I kind of fell into it. Um, I to get out. I, want, I thought I wanted to become a firefighter for a little while. Um, that lasted all of about a year, year and a half. Um, I'm like, you know, I, I belong, I belong in the kitchen. Um, it's just my kind of people, you know, like that's, yeah. um, it, it's a different, it's a different breed of people in the kitchen and I guess that's my breed. <laughs> yeah, so I absolutely. Just ended up in the kitchen and I, uh, never looked back. Fair enough. What made you want to go to culinary school then? Just thought that I was like part was, of the natural progression of becoming a chef. Yeah, you know, you just gotta hear. You keep hearing like you need a culinary degree to advance. Um, you need that degree. You need that degree, and it was just kind of instilled in my head. And um, Chris Reeves was my sous chef at the time at TPC, um, and he kind of steered me in that direction. He was just kind of like, I mean, you don't have to go to culinary school, but you know, it's gonna kind of help. And he was kind of one of the people I. Uh, I looked up to uh, young in my career and I'm like, Oh man, I want to be like Chris, you know? And then when he started telling me, you know, mm -hmm. you got to kind of go to college school, you're going to kind of do it. Um, I did it. He was right in a way. I mean, I, I can't say um, I, I didn't learn nearly as much as I did in the field in culinary school, but you got that piece of right. paper, I guess that, that you need, um, you know, you kind of go in there yeah. thinking, I'm going to get out of culinary school. I'm going to be a sous chef. I'm going to be making all this money, this and that. And it's like, no, you get out of culinary school. You're like, oh, that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. That's not what's happening, at least. <laughs> no, definitely. I feel like that's not what happens to most people. What's up, Maria? She's watching from Jacksonville. Hey, Maria. Uh, yeah, that's uh, – I feel like that happens to a lot of people. Looking back on it now, like – do you, are you glad that you went to culinary school or do you think it was something you, you could miss? And would you recommend going to culinary school for like young people wanting, getting to, wanting to get into Oh, I definitely, I, I definitely recommend it. Um, I would have, I'd do it again if I had to. I mean, I met some of my okay. best friends, lifelong friends in culinary school. Um, unfortunately, you, the piece of paper does help if you're, uh, if you're, if you're serious about the career. I, I would recommend working in the kitchen for a couple of years and and being a line cook and kind of making sure this is what you want to do before going to culinary school. Um, I'd say, I mean, we started culinary school with probably 40 kids in our class. I think 12 of us graduated. And out of that 12, I want to say there's maybe like three of us that are still in the industry. So, I mean, that's a, it's a big waste of money if you're going just because – you think you want to be a chef, you know, you got, I would recommend working in the kitchen for a little while before, before you take that step to culinary school. You still there? Here we go. All right. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, yeah we got a little glitch. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. All technical difficulties. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. What? I'm not sure where I, You're talking where about I was. Well, I asked if you would recommend people go to culinary school if they're getting into the industry or just kind of going right off to a restaurant. Yeah, I would like, like, I, like I was saying, I think uh, – I would definitely recommend it. I, I would, I'd, I'd say work in the industry a little bit, work, work in the kitchen for a couple of years just to make sure it's, it's what you want to do um, before mm -hmm. you jump right in and spend however much culinary school goes for these days, which is very cheap. Um, I guess I, I think we started off our class with 40 people in it. 
only 12 graduated. I think there's only three, maybe four of us that are still uh, still in the business. So mm. it's, uh, it's not for everybody. Yeah. Why did, why did you end up picking uh, Le Cordon Bleu at the time? Uh, it was the closest to the TPC that I could still kind of come back and work at TPC on the weekends. So I kind of had a job. I, I would leave culinary school. I mean, we would be done with school by, I think our last class was at noon. So I could make the 2 o'clock shift on a Friday night, work a double on Saturday, mm -hmm. Um, work the morning shift on Sunday and get back to school and kind of still have some money to, you know, spend, pay some bills, things like that. Um, yeah. And I just like to eat and I didn't want to leave it. I didn't want to leave and then not have the chance of getting back or whatnot. So I just kind of made it work for the couple of years that I was down in Orlando. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah, it. I, I was well. at... Uh, Was that what were you saying? I said I, I I didn't think I found any. I think I tried to do programs in Jacksonville, and I don't at the time. I don't think they're they were just up and coming. Um, I think there's. I mean, I think there's quite a few there now. Yeah, because um, I went to Florida State College of Jacksonville FSCJ for their culinary program. I'm not sure how old that program is, but I really I enjoyed going to culinary school. I, I met a lot of really great people. I got a lot of connections through them. And then I, I also, I was working at TPC at the time, going to school and doing doubles and all that stuff while in school. And so, yeah, I mean, like yeah, I said, it, it makes sense. Was kind of, fun. I mean, I, I was on the uh, competition there, team there, which was, uh, I mean, probably some of the funnest cooking experiences I've had. I mean, you don't really get to compete and cook in the career really. So, I mean, that, that was awesome. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't regret it at all. I, I learned a lot more like actually in the I did at culinary school, but um, right. yeah, I would recommend it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I usually do too. I think it's a good choice. It teaches a lot of basics and uh, depending on where you go to school, a lot of professors are pretty open about like what the industry is like and what you're going to experience, like the uh -huh. low pay, you know, no weekends, no holidays. You're just, you know, you're gonna be working a lot. And so, mm -hmm. at least my, excuse me, my professors were. They were very honest about that. Yeah, Which yeah, was, mine were as well. Nice. And, and I worked. I mean, I didn't go to college school until I was 25 years old. So I was already in the business for, for uh, quite a few years. Yeah, FSCJ is uh, 31 years, 31 years old. Wow, That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Joe Harold is one of my professors, so thanks for tuning in, Chef. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, culinary school, it can be great or not. It really depends on what you want to get out of it. I feel like it's just like any school. If you really want to do it, you're going to have a good time yeah. in culinary school. And if not, then you won't. Exactly. But, um, so you you were at a the catering job as your first like cooking position? Yeah, so my brother-in-law was uh... – was a cook there and um you know I was 14 15 years old just trying to make some money and he brought me on and I started uh learning some basics there you know just being around food wash dishes a lot um <laughs> that kind of thing and uh it just kind of stuck you know it just it was a family thing my mom like I said cooked meals seven days a week we never went out to eat I mean we'd go to visit my grandma and it was always um being around food um so just mm -hmm. kind of, I guess I was brought up and around food, so it just kind of stuck. Yeah, that makes sense. Was there any, did, after doing that, was there something, did you want to do, did you consider doing like catering full time? Is that something you wanted to pursue or was just cooking that you kind of got It was at on? first. I mean, um, it, it definitely was at first. I mean, it, it was what I was thinking until I kind of got into the, the opportunity to move down to Jacksonville. And then, uh, then I just split off into the whole restaurant side of the thing, and kind of fell in love with being on the line and and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. It's just a whole different ball game. Um, and then, yeah. I mean, even at even at TPC, I worked as the banquet chef for a while, and uh, I mean that was basically the same exact thing as catering. It's just you're not 
jumping from location to location kind of thing. It's like your uh, you know, dining room is right there, and it's always the same dining room. But um, yeah. I, I still love doing banquets. Banquets are fun. I mean, that that was that's just as fun as being on the line. Sometimes it's a good little break too. Yeah. Yeah, it was always fun to get pulled up for banquets every so often. Sometimes I hated it. I was like, I don't want to do that at all. But sometimes it was fun. <laughs> it was it was fun it's, seeing it's the. It's nice when you uh, just want a little break from the action kind of thing, you know. It's definitely not true. as. Nice it was pace. fun. Yeah, it was fun having our like little rivalry of like the line versus banquets <laughs> and like going out yeah. there and just like talking shit and then talking uh -huh. shit. To, I was like, yeah, uh -huh. that was always fun, <laughs> but. So what? A, how did you end up in Ponte Vedra? Like, what was the opportunity you got? Was it just TPC, so, or did you just my my brother there? moved down to, to down to the Jacksonville Jacksonville area, and um, myself and a friend came down uh, for the Super Bowl. It was a five Patriots were playing uh, the Eagles, I believe. And, um, I happened to go went golfing with my brother and. Uh, uh, some neighbors and uh, w one of the neighbors happened to be in the tour and we just got to talk and he's like what do you do this and that I told him he's like you want to come down and and uh, work the players it's in uh, it's in a month and I'm like uh, you know kind of gave it some thought I'm like you know what I do you know Jacksonville's fun um, I had a blast during the Super Bowl the Patriots won you know I was lo loving life I'm like yeah let's do this let's take this chance and uh a month later, I uh, packed my stuff up and drove down to Florida. Nice. And did you like? And you worked the the players tournament just as a volunteer? Or did you like get hired on? Uh, full -time, no, I actually like, got hired on. They um, they're actually looking for a full time position. Um, so I got hired on. Uh, it just happened to be uh, a month before the players, but uh, it worked out. I wasn't a volunteer. I wasn't um tournament staff one night i was i had that full-time position so i was still there after after um nice. after tournament if it was just a temporary thing i probably would have never worked back there they stuck me on a grill um we were outside <laughs> in this tent and oh it was awful i probably grilled off three four thousand burgers in this grill just oh, grease and everything I, I remember at one point I had goggles. They gave me goggles because of the smoke, and my eyes were just watering. <laughs> and the goggles were worse because the smoke would get caught under the goggles. And I remember um, going into the locker room, like, you need to go see the, the doctor. Like, something's going on with your eyes. I'm like, no, it's red. Like, look at all the smoke and grease, you know? And um, yeah. I remember seeing Tiger Woods walking in the clubhouse, and he uh, kind of sat down next to me, and he looked at me. And uh, I, I, we were just both – I don't know if I'm allowed to swear or not. We were just chatting, you, can you know. Swear. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I'm like, "What are you doing? like? Why are you sitting there chatting?" He's like, "I just didn't, he didn't want to go out and talk to the media. So he just kind of sat there for a few minutes, I guess, kind of gathering his thoughts. And, uh, and then that's when I was kind of like, you know what? This is kind of cool. I think I want to hang out here for a little while. But I mean, if yeah, it was, it was, it was an awful job. That 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 week was just like, ugh. Like this is what really, this is about. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That's but really my, funny. my week ended well with this. You know, I'm gonna take this out. Yeah. Um, that's funny because that's like how I started at TPC like two weeks or no, it was a week before the tournament. And so it was like I think I did two weeks straight without a day off first because it was going right into the tournament okay. back onto another week of work. And so but it was fun. I mean, I got. I think I got really lucky with my first tournament. I got put out in like one of the hospitality tents with um, the uh, guest chefs for something. I don't know, yeah. but it was nice being out. So it was fun. But so beside after the tournament was over, you know, what did you? What was your first position on the line, or or was it banquets? So after tournament, after that tournament was over. Um, they actually we did uh, pantry, I think salads, sandwiches, that kind of thing. Um, there's a phone they club because they were built at school. Well, not at this point, you know, it's 
um, sandwich really you're breaking up real bad Sam I can't I got nothing uh, I got nothing. Super choppy. A little bit. Go again. Uh, can you hear? Me? Sort of. <laughs> it's like cutting in and out. Oh god. Went away. We lost him. I don't have anything. Fun to say. I don't. I didn't plan for this to happen, so I don't know how to fill this time. But he's back. There you go. I can hear Almost. It. Yeah. Still there? Are we here? Sort of. Hear me? Heard. Oh God, it's really rough. I'm sorry, everybody. You guys have any questions for me? It's fine. You still there with us, Tim? I can, I barely hear you. You're just cutting in and out. Ooh. Well, bound to have a rough one at some point. I feel like I've been pretty lucky with connection up to this point. This one's it's a little rough, though. Not the best circumstances with weather. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Are we back? Okay, cool. Yeah, I got you. I can hear you. Never lost. Okay. You still there? Now you're getting choppy again. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Are we are we still good? I think we're good. I'm, good. I'm not sure okay. if you are or not. Yeah, I think we're good now. Okay. Okay, cool. Um I don't remember the last thing I asked you and I don't I couldn't hear what you were saying. I can't remember what you asked me in the office. We're at. Uh, uh, I think you're. I think you're talking about your first position at TBC after the tournament. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was just. Uh, I was just a line cook at that point. Um, I think okay. I was working the cold side pantry. Um, Got it. Yeah. And then I was. I, I was telling how I. Um, I, they, the next, the following tournament is where they close the clubhouse down, and that's where I took the um, the leap into culinary school because they were just working okay. out of a trailer at that point. Okay, so you were at uh, you were at TBC for quite a while then. Yeah, it was twelve years. I started in two thousand five. I think it was March of two thousand five, and I left in uh, December of two thousand sixteen. Okay. Eleven years. What, what kept you? What kept you at TBC for like that long? Never wanted to branch out to any of the other restaurants it was, in Jacks. It was the people, man. The people bring guy. I just the, the environment really it was like family environment. For my family, everybody there kind of became family. Um, I just didn't want to leave. I mean, it was the. It was, a place to be in Jacksonville. Um, there was really no other restaurant to go to. There was no, I, I really wanted to stay in the kind of atmosphere where you know you got the banquets, catering company, where you got to do a little bit of everything. In yeah. my eyes at the time, there was no, uh, there was nowhere else in Jacksonville that even compared to it. Um, I remember going during culinary school that country club for a little bit, um, on and on, just uh, during the week kind of thing. And I remember uh, it was a master chef there and, uh, who was this guy for. Uh, so that kind of was like, I didn't really want it, it was a home, I guess you could say, and I was a little strict. And, I got a little bit of that. 
I just said how it was uh, a little more. Uh, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I got you now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was saying how it was a little more loose, a little more fun, very family like. I mean, it was uh, it was fun. It was, the people yeah. there were just like I said. I still some of my best friends are still down in Florida. I mean, it was just like family. You know, it was me being away from home and everything, and they kind of became family. I didn't want to get up and move again. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, my time at TPC, I wasn't there for as long as you were, but I was there for about three three years, and it, it was a lot of fun. Like, we always had a good time there. Um, you know, most there's kitchen drama in any kitchen, obviously, but we always had fun, and we made it work, and yes, it was definitely a good place to be. Was there, since you were there for so long, I'm sure you put a lot of dishes up on the menu. Were there any that you were particularly proud of? You know, I try to think about this, and there's really not something that really comes to mind. It was more, for me, it was more, um, and, uh, like, once I became a little in, into the chef to cuisine, the sous chef position, it's more letting uh, the line guys kind of come up with dishes and uh, get creative and do their thing, and that kind of see those dishes actually turn out really, really, really well. Um, I'd say I'd be more proud of things of, of that nature than than something I did. It was uh, I, I want to say it was a dish that uh, you and Maria actually put up one time. Um, pasta carbonara, is my favorite. Um, one of my it is my favorite dish, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to say it was maybe Maria. I think you were involved. I'm not sure, but you got to put together this uh, duck confit yeah. of carbonara with like. Uh, uh, soft poach egg, you know. Yeah, that was. I mean, that that there made me. I mean, that I'll never forget that dish. That dish was great. Um, so it made me happier. That was killer. That was know. definitely. Yeah. It, it, it made that me was more definitely more real. Out, I, 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 I happy to see you guys put up dishes and get creative, um, doing stuff yeah. like that rather than myself. I, I, I guess I just remember those more. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely was more Maria. I think I helped a little bit on that, but it was like that was Maria's baby for sure. Can't take yeah, care yeah, of that. Yeah, it was her baby. Um, it I was really promotes you trying to master that egg forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did the sous vide eggs, and then we like had to like reheat them for service, and it was like we did our best, yeah. and they came out pretty well. Like we had I mean, some, you some guys, ones. you guys worked on it. She worked on it, and it, and it came out awesome. It worked. It was good. Yeah, that was that was a good dish. It was very heavy. That was a tough one to walk away from. Oh yeah, right away. But it was really it was at foie gras butter, duck confit, bucatini, and a poached egg with I think pancetta. It was yep, yep. super was, heavy, was, but man, it was good. It was very good. Yeah, we made a lot of those. Um, kind of like pivoting a little bit, but a big issue with kind of restaurant work is most of us are underpaid for the most part, depending on where you're going and what you're doing. But at least at base pay, a lot of it's underpaid. I know TBC did a pretty good job with the, uh, for that area for pay for sure. But you know, how do you feel about like payment for restaurant workers in general? Do you feel minimum wage should be increased across the board for a lot of these people? Um, it, minimum wage increase for the restaurant business would be awesome. Um, I, I don't know if I feel that way about every job, but definitely in the restaurant business. I mean, uh, it, people don't realize the stress that line cooks are put under the, the, just the, the environment heat in a lot of kitchens. I mean, we were, we were lucky at TPC. We had AC. I don't think we, I mean, yeah, I got on the line, but, um, th there's kitchens. It gets a hundred degrees in there. You know, and, and you got a chef screaming at you mm -hmm. because uh, Miss Susie didn't like the medium steak that you put out, which was a perfect medium, but she really wanted a medium well. Or, you know, it's just that the, the environment, the stress, everything that comes along with the job, I just don't think uh, people realize it. And uh, I, I definitely I definitely think a minimum wage should be at least $15 an hour. For, for, I mean, even the lowest position in the kitchen. I mean, it's it's a lot. Even your dishwashers, I mean, think about it. You're, 
you're in a busy restaurant, you are going through some dishes, and those guys are scrubbing and getting them back out so that you yeah. can use them again. Not to mention all the hot pans that you guys are throwing at them, um, just so they can get it out so you can keep cooking. I mean, there's no endless supply of pans. I don't care what kitchen yeah. you're going to. There's a point where you're you're yelling pans like I need some pans to make some dishes. So it's like just all around from, from uh, you know your 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 line cooks to your pantry, whatever the lowest position you would say is it. Your um, dishwashers, I think everybody yeah. definitely serves a lot more money. Not to mention you got servers coming back bragging that they just made two hundred dollars on a table. And you're sitting there, oh, making, I know. you know, twelve dollars in that hour that they just threw two hundred in there. You know, it's like, come on, so yeah. something's not right. <laughs> yeah, I used to get uh, some restaurants. It's different with servers. You know, some of them really do deserve like that big tip that they got or whatever. Oh, but man, I, I remember at TPC, at TPC specifically, because they had we had you know they had a service charge there, so they always got a tip regardless, and then they were always mm -hmm. complaining if the extra tip wasn't enough. And it's like. You know, or the com complaining about their, you know, six-hour shift or something. It's like, yeah, exactly. Like, you better get out of my window right now. <laughs> I yeah. don't want to hear it. I mean, that's, that's – um, I mean, I'm not saying that servers – there are some professional servers that know what they're doing out oh, yeah. there that deserve For every sure. penny they make. But there's also, you know, your college students that are serving just to get through college that really don't care about the issue you're putting up or anything. That in my opinion, they're making yeah. way much money compared to the to the guy behind the line. Yeah, when I was when I was cooking at Little Goat, I used to tell the servers that I wish I could have. I didn't have the authority to do so, but if they messed up a ticket that I had to fix, like by pushing something out on the fly because it's their mistake, I always told them I was like, I should get a percentage of your tip from that table because I made that I made <laughs> yeah. that up for you. Yeah. I never got any money, but I feel like that would have been, that's fair. That's, that been, that's a fair policy a restaurant should have. But are you still with me or you freeze up? No. You're choppy. Are you there? You there? I'm, I'm here. Yep, you got me. You're I'm good? still here too. Okay, yep. all right. Oh, we're just we're just gonna keep pushing pushing forward. All right. Oh, thanks. He's he's with me on that one. Appreciate that. Um, so another thing that's been kind of changing, at least from what I've seen a little bit here in Chicago, and it might be changing everywhere for the most part, but it's kind of the the yes chef culture of like the oh I lost him. And I lost him. Hopefully he comes back. I don't know what we're going to do. If any of you have questions for me, leave them in the comments. Or hit that like button if you're enjoying what you're watching. Share the link. Let's get some viewers. It's going to be great. It's a good night. Pandering. Was everyone ex Did everyone watch the Super Bowl? Were you happy that Tom Brady got his seventh win? I was happy for him. That was my Super Bowl pandering. Back. All right. Are we back? All yeah, right. I think so. I was talking about – okay. I was talking about the Super Bowl while you were gone. Um, <laughs> um, so I was asking about, like, the Yes Chef culture of kind of basically just giving your entire body, mind, to the kitchen and whatever the chef says. Like, I know at TPC it wasn't really ran like that. It, you know, a lot of the chefs there I feel like – didn't really go by chef. It was only like the executive chef that we called chef and everyone else was just names. But, you know, how did you try to, I guess, maintain that while you were in a position of power at TPC with that kind of kitchen mentality? Um, for, I want to be, but I want to be able to, to me with thing I definitely agree with the yes for the you know line chart or whatnot in that um, situation like whoever's on the line lead line guy for one but I uh, my uh, once to instill the 
jumping. I still kind of get, but I, I get upset with somebody calling me down I just feel like it would make people a little less intimidated, I guess, or whatnot. Or, or mm-hmm. easy to come across. And I just feel like I would be. I guess I just like to be a more of a people that do it this way and no other way because um, I mean if you work in the kitchen, you know there's a million different ways to do one thing. Um, and it yeah. always be right. I just kind of think that that's kind of the situation for the most part or or what I just uh, style I guess of management. Oof, I got like five percent of that, to be honest. This is rough. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I would say keep Keith wants to know if you're on the moon. No, no, I wish, but no. I'm not sure. Yeah, frozen. Yeah, I can't. I'm not getting anything on your end. Now I can. Now I can see you, and you're moving real time. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I got you again now. Okay. I'm not sure if it's your connection well, or my connection. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah. I know that I can yeah. always see myself, but sometimes I can't really see you. Yeah, it's the same for me. Like I'm always clear, but I <coughs> you, you freeze up or whatever. But all right, yeah. well we're just gonna keep well, we're pu- we're pushing forward. We're not gonna we're just gonna keep let's pushing go. forward. What was one of your biggest management pet pet peeves like for a subordinate and? Like that you saw on your subordinates, like what was a uh, big pet peeve of yours as a manager? I guess, uh, you know, I, I always liked letting people kind of do their own thing a little bit. But once uh, once I realized your thing is not working and I'm telling you how to do something and, uh, you know, you're going to continue to do your thing. It's like, all right, you know, I let you try. I'm not being that chef that it's my way or not or my way or no way kind of thing. But now you're going to continue to do yeah. what you uh, what you're not doing. And, and shortcuts was a big pet peeve. I, mean, I think uh, just like uh, I mean, I had one person one time because he was uh, chopping up spinach to try to use it as basil. Like really, like could quit on the shortcuts. You know that that that's probably that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Of shortcuts, like if that's a he, rough shortcut. Yeah, dude. Like, you gotta go. Sorry, it's, that's not gonna work. Um, that's short. Awesome. I feel like I was there for that. Oh, I, I want to say that was way before your time. Oh, really? I think that was like one I... of the, one of the first people. I think I had to. I got taught how to fire. I guess it was kind of thing. It was uh, oh, okay. Uh, chef, uh, <clears throat> who was the chef? It was Hector, I think, and. Uh, you know, I've never fired anybody at that point. And he was like, come out here. Let, let me kind of show you how this is done. And I was like, whoa, okay. That was uh, that was a good lesson, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, in I that situation, I look back on now, I wouldn't have felt bad if I was a chef that had to do the firing either. Like, spinach for basil, yeah. I mean, come on. That's, that's, uh, that's deserved, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so... When did when you left TPC? Did you get like the job offer, and you're like, you know, this is too good, I gotta take it, or you just felt you had it was time to move on from TPC, and you looked elsewhere? Well, I guess um, I feel my time coming up at TPC event and and a little you know, and I had a couple offers. I got nothing on your end. I can't hear. I can barely hear you. I got you. Can you hear me now? Okay. I um, got you a little bit. Hello? Can you hear me? Still going? 
Yeah, I, I can, can hear I you. Can hear you. Okay, we're just keep going in and out. You just can't hear me. I can hear you a little bit. I mean, I can I can barely see you. It's it's choppy. It's like this whole this whole process. You. Yeah, I can hear you and I can see you. Now I can hear and see you. Okay, I think we're back back at it. I guess. Um, yep. <laughs> No, I lost you again. I got nothing. Oh man, this is a disaster of an interview. <laughs> <laughs> like the worst one. I was bound to happen. It's okay. What's we'll a what's we'll have a redemption? There? Ah, barely. Let's we'll have a redemption episode for you, Tim, because this is just rough. I feel like we've only gotten to hear like a quarter of what you've had to say so far. Um. It happens in technology. What are you do? I know. I know. All right. So since we're about an hour, we're just going to – I'm going to get you back on the show, Tim, because we needed to do this right and actually have a good episode with you. So we're just going to cut to the lightning round for this because it's just quick quick answers, and then we'll we'll do our best to get you back on so everyone can actually hear your story because this, this is just rough. I'm not doing you justice. So – Okay. But I still got I still gotta do the lightning round graphics. So here we go, lightning round. All right, you still with me? Yep, yeah, I'm here. All right. Question number one. Were you sad when Tom Brady left New England? Absolutely. It was a it was Even a very sad day, way, but when, <laughs> oh, I'm so excited that he won. I'm definitely still a Tom Brady fan. No doubt about yeah. it. I was still rooting for him 100%. Fair enough. I think I watched more Tampa Bay games this season than I did New England. <laughs> I mean, probably more fun to watch. I don't know how yeah, New England didn't sure. do that well this year. <laughs> no, we didn't have a good season. It was rough. All great teams have to come to an end at some point, you know? It happens. I agree. I don't oh, know if I'll yep. ever see those people from New England at this point. We'll see. You never know. All I'm right, number two. <laughs> All right, number two. What's your go-to fast food? Ooh, um, go-to fast food is probably a Whopper. What was it? Burger King Whopper. Oh, okay, nice. A Burger a King one. Whopper. It's a good one. Uh, a, All right, number three. Go-to. What? That's a good one. Yeah. All right, number three. What's your go-to hangover cure? Burger King Whopper? Oh, um, pho. Pho was definitely, oh, okay. I'd say, is uh, is one that for makes me. Sense. You just sweat it all out. Spicy pho. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense because you got that nice, like, hearty beef broth, so you get some protein in there, but it's just broth, and then you got the veggies and the spicy. Yeah. That's a good one. That makes sense. That was that was uh, that was probably mine for sure. That's a we good had one. A lot of those. All right. Number four, jelly beans or gummy bears? Gummy bears. I love Same. gummy bears. Probably one of my favorite candies. Gummy bears. You have a favorite brand? You have to do insane because they get stuck in your teeth and whatnot. But I don't know. I like. Yeah, those are good. Those, when you have to like really suck on them to like get them out of your teeth, those are the good gummy bears, the hard ones. But all right, number yeah. five. What is your dream vacation? Dream vacation. Um, I want to say probably Asia somewhere. I mean, Japan, Thailand, something like that. Um, yeah, probably my favorite type. One of my favorite type of foods and. I'd like to actually get the the authentic food instead of what my version is of Chinese food or Japanese or whatnot. Yeah. You know, I just don't think I've gotten the authentic street food or whatnot. I think that would probably be a, a dream vacation for me. Not sure how yeah, realistic pretty, it is in the next couple of years right now, but eventually. Yeah, it's a tough one. 
<laughs> well, you'll have to go to Vietnam so you get some some authentic pho because it's yeah. pretty fire. Uh, great. All right, number six. What is something that you own that you need to throw out? Something that I own that I need to throw out. Honestly, I was a hoarder forever. I would just keep everything and anything. And in the last, say, four years of my life, I have kind of learned to get rid of everything and kind of yeah, okay. keep what I That's need. Um, so at the moment, ugh, it's probably some kind of some hats. I love wearing hats, and I've okay. got some, some pretty old ones that I that I just can't get rid of. So I'd probably say some hat that I have lying around in a closet somewhere. Okay, that makes sense. I have too many hats too that I don't wear that I probably need to throw out. Uh, all right, number seven. What is or what was your most referenced cookbook? Ooh. I think it was called the Chef Artiste or something like that. It was, uh, oh, I haven't looked at it in so long. Um, it's kind of just a flavor uh, combination cookbook kind of thing, um, for what I remember. Okay. Um, it was just kind of combining flavors, what flavors go with what. Um, and it was just really when I got stumped. And, uh, I mean, it happens yeah. to everybody. Sometimes you're just like, what What am I adding to this dish? What am I missing? And it was uh, one of those reference type books that you just kind of go back. I think it was the – Cameron gave it to me, actually. Uh, I don't know if you remember Cameron Walton. Um, he was a sous chef, chef to cuisine, I think before, before you got there. No, um, yeah, he left before I heard about him all the time and he left before I got there. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it now. I'm being stuck. I think it was called like chef artiste or something like that. I can't remember. Hmm. I don't know. But it sounds like the flavor Bible, something like that, where it's like. Something along those lines. Preparing. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. Flavor Bible, though, yeah, it was along those lines. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, those are good to have around for sure. I use mine all the oh, yeah. time if I'm stumped on an ingredient that I was like, I have no idea what this is or how to what goes with it. So that definitely helps. But all right, number eight. What is the most underrated food city? Underrated food city. Oh man. Mm. I mean, uh, is Boston considered a food city? I don't, I don't think it is. I've never really known yeah, I mean, Boston to be known as yeah, a food city. I, I think I'm going to say Boston, but I, I don't All even right, know that's if, uh, if it even is a food city. I don't know. That's a tough question. I don't know. I mean, I just think of well, Harvard and drunk guys getting in fights. Yeah, I mean, Boston. when I think of Boston food, it's really <laughs> clam chowder and lobster rolls. Right, yeah. So, <laughs> no, that makes sense. I mean, there's a lot more to it. <laughs> I'm sure there is. One day I'll explore it more. Uh, all right, number nine. What is the most used app on your phone? Most used app on my phone? Um, I'd probably say my my Google Explorer look stuff up all the time. I mean, um, is that an even That's an app? Good. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Most Instagram, people say Instagram maybe. So was, I, try, I try to stay yeah. off of uh, Facebook as much as I can, but I mean, right. it doesn't work out that great. I'd say one of those two probably, I guess. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Number 10. What was your favorite season for menu development? I'd say fall. I like I like heavy dishes. Fall. I like braised meats. Fall, winter mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, you know, risottos, heavy pasta dishes, um, braising. Yeah. I love braising. Um, probably definitely in the fall, winter, fallish. Yeah, that makes sense. I just made some mushroom risotto with some braised short ribs for dinner tonight. Came out mm. pretty good. Yeah, that it was tasty. Great meal. Use that uh, the instant pot. For the short ribs, hour and a half. Oh, I Go love that phone. thing. If you don't, yeah. If you don't have an instant pot, I, I got you one, one in the beginning of the pandemic. And it's all I use. Yeah, they're great. I cooked. I they're cooked uh, awesome. a leg of lamb in it yesterday. Oh, nice. 
That's cool. I, I'm curious. My uh, we got one for my mom for Christmas, and it has a sous vide function, and I really want her to use it because I'm just curious how it works with, in yeah. there. Like I don't. Yeah, it is interesting. So I, I, I really want her to use it. Um, all right, number eleven. What is your favorite comedy movie? Cool Runnings. Nice. The Jamaican <laughs> bobsled team. That's that's my favorite movie. Actually, I love that movie. <laughs> Cracks me up even Just even to this day. Laughing all the time. That's it's funny. funny. It's a. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's a funny movie. Anytime I saw that, that, like if I came home and it was on Disney Channel or something, I'd always watch it. It's like, well, yeah, I gotta watch oh, Cool it's Running. Hilarious. But cracks me up. Yeah. All right, last one. Who would play you in a movie about your life? Oh my god, I have no idea. Who would play me in a movie about my life? I don't know. I can't even up with someone that quick. I have no idea. I'm gonna say Danny DeVito. No know. offense, but you're short. So I'm okay, so. Anybody that knows me is watching this. What do you guys say? Yeah, if you're watching and you can actually see him in the broadcast, who should play him? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> All right. Well, I do apologize, Tim, for kind of yeah. Next time we'll have to we'll have to go it over it again. But I do apologize for kind of the bad network connection that we got here, and so you weren't really able to tell your story that well to where we could hear. And I apologize to everyone who's watching, but thank you for joining me this evening. And we'll definitely have to get you back on sometime in the future, hopefully under better conditions. And we can, uh, he said some Boston actor me. would play you. <laughs> some Boston actor. Jeez. Oh my God. Yeah, of course. I, I really appreciate it. It was great. Um, getting to talk to you again. It's been a while. So like I said, we'll have to have you on again. Um, for everyone watching, thank you for joining us and kind of putting, putting up with the, <laughs> the really bad broadcast that we had. Um, yeah, sorry guys. If join it was my me. End, I'm not sure, but yeah, I'm sure it was. Thank you, Alex, hard, for having me. But uh, yeah, of course. Join us. Uh, join me next week. We're having a farewell episode for my friend Addison, who unfortunately is leaving the area, and so uh, we're gonna have a little my first in-person interview next week. So stay tuned. I think that'll be a really fun one. But again, thanks, Tim, and thanks for everyone for watching. And I hope everyone has a good night. Stay safe. Have a good night, everybody. Cool. Thank you. Bye.